What's up guys, Eric with Veris Engineering. Today we're gonna to be doing some brake cooling testing on our VBWX. So a lot of you guys ask us what our brake cooling kits do. We're here at the track to prove what it does on the latest brake cooling kit that we released, which is for the VBWX. All right guys, so we are in front of our VBWRX, which we have a brake cooling kit for. This has a backing plate that replaces your factory backing plate. And then we have a duct right here that allows us to connect a two and a half inch brake duct hose, high temp. So this is gonna be a running revision for Varus Engineering. The reason why this brake cooling kit actually took a year to come out, this was actually designed a year ago, was because we can't produce these carbon ducts fast enough. We kept on trying to produce them faster and faster and faster. We added more tooling, but because of demand on our brake cooling kits, we couldn't keep up with demand. We're now 3D printing them out of 316L, stainless. This is a 3D printed metal part. How cool is that? It's freaking cool to me, I don't know. It's our first 3D printed metal part. So in my opinion, this is super cool. We now have the ability to produce these substantially quicker. I'm talking, we got 200 pieces made in two weeks. So we now are able to ma mass produce our brake cooling kits, keep them on the shelf, keep them in stock, and you guys get them at your door quicker. So running revision here, we have the carbon ducts on our VB. We're gonna go 3D printed moving forward. They both are great. This adds a little bit of weight, but realistically, it's a few grams. It's not a lot, because we actually went with a thinner wall. The carbon duct, is awesome and looks the part obviously but at the end of the day we're moving to 3d printed so that we can keep them on the shelf and you guys happy with our cooling products so we have some temp stickers we've placed them on the rotor oh my gosh i'm going to turn off this freaking beeping probably the entire video is just gonna be like ding we have temp stickers on the rotor and then we have it on the caliper. So the caliper sticker is like kind of right here. You're not going to be able to see it until we take the wheel off. And then we have the rotor sticker, which is right there. And basically what that does is that will change color. Um, it'll actually just turn black as that temperature is reached. So that's going to be the temp that happens on the track. It's not going to be the temp that happens when it comes in because on the out lap, sorry, the in lap from from being on track. It's actually gonna be cooling everything down. So I'm gonna be off the brakes, I'm gonna be cooling everything down. And then on track, we're gonna be hard on the brakes and that's actually gonna be heating it up and that's gonna see the max temperature that the rotor and the caliper hit on track. When we get off the track, we're gonna bring it back into the garage and we have this thermal handheld temp gun. This actually goes up to a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. So we're actually gonna find out what the max temperature of the rotor is it's gonna be really hard to get different areas, I think. We're gonna try it. I haven't ever used this in this way before, but we can already see that we have a max of like 100 degrees Celsius somewhere. And it looks like it's from the engine, which makes sense because the engine was just running. But as far as the rotor face goes, we're pretty cool. We are cool to the touch because we haven't been on track yet. So that's gonna be the game plan for testing. And then if you move on forward here, we have our two inlets. So this one goes to the right side of the car. That one goes to the left side of the car. I'm gonna go grab some tape and I'm literally gonna tape this one shut. So we're gonna be comparing the right side to the left side of the car. Left side will be getting full airflow. The right side will act like an OEM car, which has no airflow to the rotor. So let's get taping that up and then get on track.
see what kind of temps we got. So we're looking at a max of like 262 Celsius um, with like, I don't know. I mean, the, the caliper is actually pretty cool. Yeah, so I would say max of 260. Oh, do I need to click it and then it'll take? All right. So this side is about 20 Celsius hotter, and that's after like a cool down lap, or well, yeah, full cool down lap. I saw a max of like two, 290, 292. Oh, there's one, 300, 305. So we got a max of like 305 right there. Um, if I zoom in on the caliper, or the the brake pad we're at like 200 celsius so we'll do that one right there see what this side looks like so this side substantially cooler 265 is what i'm seeing max and then if we zoom in onto the the pad we're at like 185. all right cool so the stickers where um, we placed them initially, they kind of just melted. So we're gonna try a different location. And we also um, increased it to 500 degrees. We already showed the, the handheld thermal temp too difference. Yeah. But we can do that, like, we can do that coming in hot and see what that does. I think we just come in hot. Okay. Run it again and then see how it deviates. Okay. If there's any difference. Do you want me to do that out of car or are you gonna just you want me to hop out? Yeah. Yeah. I'll just do okay, it. I'll do it. How quick is the Lamborghini out here, do you know? It's got like a max of Max of 415, 417. So this side is like three, 382. And 195. I can try and do a few more laps if you want, but three more laps, four more laps. See what happens. Because I definitely got it hotter the first time. I definitely got it hotter the first time. Because I only did two laps this time. Last time I did like five. Gotcha. It was hotter coming into the garage than it was. Yeah, hotter. but I did like a full cool down lap, which cools the entire car down a lot. Yeah. So I'll see what I can do real quick. got a little bit of smoke but it's not bad um, this side we're looking at max 425 and this side we're looking at max 475 470 I've got a picture of that Yeah, so 470 on this side. Let's see if the temp sticker, temp sticker shows differences. The temp sticker shows differences, yay! Woo! Yes! Yes! We just captured that it works. Cool. All right, so on my four monitors here, we have the driver's side and the passenger side. Passenger side had no brake cooling, driver's side had the brake cooling. We have the rotors on the bottom, which we we're just trying to get the max temperature of the rotor. And then up top, I focused in on the brake pad. So if we focus our view down to the bottom first, 
we're gonna look at the rotor. So I basically moved the thermal camera around until I found the max temp was the highest. And that's the picture that I took. Ignore the center, notice where the hottest temperature is, which is like on the outer face or outer edge of that rotor. And we're at 469 degrees Celsius there. On the brake cooling side, which again, these were taken within like one minute of each other, 1352, so 152 and 151. On the driver side, which was the brake, or brake cooling side, we're at 392. That difference is over 70 degrees Celsius. That's quite a bit. So let's do a quick actual numbers. 76.5 degrees Celsius difference between the brake cooling side and the non-brake cooling side. Now, if we move up and we look at the pad side, we are, we're gonna focus on that center. So center, not the max. The max, if you look at the max, which are, is down here, it's actually measuring the rotor temperature. We're gonna ignore that. We're actually gonna use the center measurement because we were focusing on the pad here. We're at 200.8 degrees Celsius and we're at 193.2 degrees Celsius. So that difference is a lot closer, but we're still seven degrees Celsius cooler on the driver's side, which has the brake cooling. Now, as Alex is gonna show you on the video, we also put some stickers on the caliper and the rotor. And both the caliper and the rotor showed higher temperature, higher max temperatures on the non-brake cooling side and lower max temperatures on the brake cooled side. All right, guys, that concludes the brake cooling kit video that we're doing right now. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, by all means, send us an email, sales at veris-engineering.com. We respond to everything. So if we don't respond, it's because we didn't get it. So make sure you send it to the correct email address. We appreciate it. Till next time.